वेब गाइड जंक्शन एच प्लेन एस सीरीज ऑन माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग लेक्चर नंबर वन पॉइंट वन थ्री एच प्लेन टेस आर माइक्रोवेव जंक्शन माइक्रोवेव जंक्शन आर ए क्लास ऑफ डिवाइसेस दैट आर वाइडली यूज इन द डिजाइन ऑफ माइक्रोवेव कम्युनिकेशन ट्रांसमीटर्स एंड रिसीवर्स जंक्शन आर मेंट फॉर यूज फॉर dividing or splitting a wave into two or more parts they can also be used to combine two or more waves into a single wave some of the junctions are having three ports some are having more than three ports h plenty is a three port junction in its typical application as divider it takes input at one of its ports and the input is divided into two and the divided two parts appear at the remaining two ports in the present session we concentrate on giving information pertaining to h plenty is ranging from basics to advanced h plenty is Can be constructed either with the coaxial line pieces or with the rectangular waveguide pieces. But here the focus is on waveguide version. Now let us move further into the core of the session. A few introductory remarks or statements or pieces of information regarding H plenty. H plenty is a three-port device. It has three arms. it is used at microwave frequencies and it is basically a junction hence h plenty is a three port three ohm microwave junction these are also called shunt junctions these are also called current junctions these are also called parallel junctions these are called shunt junctions because the three limbs or the three ohms they have same voltage across in the junction region therefore shunt is the appropriate term to describe their electrical interconnection parallel is synonym to shunt the three arms they are actually pieces of rectangular waveguides or pieces of coaxial lines here we are considering rectangular waveguide pieces as already mentioned like any other junction these are also used either to split a wave into two or more parts or to combine two or more power streams into one these are passive these are linear as already mentioned you can make them either with coaxial cable pieces or with rectangular waveguide pieces but here our focus is on waveguide version how the h plant is fabricated from waveguide pieces the process is this to fabricate consider two pieces of rectangular waveguide make an aperture in the middle of one of the side walls of one piece and the second piece is connected enclosing the aperture to the first piece so take a piece this is one side wall make a, an aperture a hole remove the metal here and add another piece of waveguide here enclosing the aperture made in the side wall now waveguide h plenty is made one can notice physically there appears three arms this is one arm another arm third arm the arms which are in line these two are called collinear arms the arm which is sideways is side arm each arm is having a opening in microwave engineering opening is called port so three ports here various structural features various electrical properties or electromagnetic properties are illustrated along with the symbol and equivalent circuit of h plenty in a h plenty made with waveguide sections is given port number is given port 1 port 2 port 3 usually side arm port is given number 3 collinear arm ports are given numbers 1 and 2 all the three arms are illustrated 
the side arm is also called h arm here h stands for magnetic field vector when a wave is traveling in a waveguide let us say here in collinear arm rectangular waveguide piece in dominant mode the electric vector is vertical and the magnetic vector in the wave is horizontal any vertical plane that is parallel to side walls of the guide it is called e plane any plane that is horizontal that is parallel to a plane containing h vector that plane is called h plane as the three arms are in a horizontal plane this is called h plane t as the side arm is in a h plane it is called h arm in b is given flux line representation of the field inside the t when it is functioning several arrows are shown here these arrows represent electric field vectors when the wave is in dominant mode electric vector is always vertical it may be downwards it may be upwards if it is upwards in one half cycle in the next half cycle the electric vector will be downwards here an instant is considered in which the electric vector is vertical notice the electric vector is vertical everywhere when i say everywhere i mean both in side arm and in collinear arms it implies wave at port 1 wave at port 2 they are in phase in c is shown the symbol for h plenty a straight line and a slanting line straight line horizontal line are carrying ports 1 and 2 this line represents collinear arms whereas slanting line it represents side arm or h plane arm it is carrying port 3 in d is a shown equivalent circuit here the equivalent circuit of h plane t is in terms of transmission line sections this is one transmission line it represents both the collinear arms another piece of transmission line which represents side arm notice all the three arms they have same field intensity across them in the junction region that's why these are called shunt are parallel junctions of course the side arm appears as if it is drawing some current from the line representing collinear arms that's why it is called current junction to some more points out of the three two arms are in line and the third one is looking sideways the in line two arms usually equal in length they are called collinear arms whereas the other arm is called side arm or h arm or shunt arm as their side arm is in the h plane which is already explained these are called h plane t's usually collinear arm ports are designated as 1 and 2 and side arm port as 3 this junction device exhibits two important properties one is port 3 side arm port is perfectly matched to the junction it requires some explanation consider h plane t of course this is side arm port to 3 or side arm port is perfectly matched it means if you inject a wave into side arm port it straight away travels travels reaches the junction and there it gets absorbed totally the wave disappears completely without any reflections back this is the meaning of perfect matching to the junction the same thing cannot be told with respect to port 1 and 2 if you give if you inject a wave into port 1 it enters reaches the junction region a part of it only enters into junction remaining gets reflected same is the case with port 2 also when an input is given at port 2 it enters into the junction only partly remaining part being reflected so only port 3 is perfectly matched to the junction not 
the other two ports. Ports 1 and 2 are electrically symmetrical with respect to port 3 when its collinear arm lengths are same. See, there is physical symmetry. There is electrical symmetry. Physical symmetry is associated with appearance of the device. Electrical symmetry is associated with electrical nature of the device. A few words on physical symmetry. Let us suppose you are standing at port 3, side arm port. If you look towards port 2, you see a thing which is the same as you see when you look towards port 1 while standing at port 3. As same thing is being seen, we see that or we say that 1 and 2 are physically symmetrical with respect to port 3. Then what is electrical symmetry? If you give a wave, if you inject a wave into the junction at port 3, it goes into the junction, there it gets divided into two parts. In the case of H plane T, it is divided in, into two equal parts, one wave traveling and reaching port 2, another wave traveling and reaching port 1. So input is at port 3, output waves, two waves, they appear at ports 1 and 2. If these two outputs, they remain in phase, if they are in phase, then we say ports 1 and 2 are electrically symmetrical with respect to port 3. In case of H plenty, it is so, that's why port 3 is electrically symmetrical. It is not so in case of E plenty. E plenty also exhibits physical symmetry, but its electrical nature is such that outputs are out of phase. Hence, we say it is electrically anti-symmetrical. Now, let us move further. The functioning of these devices can be expressed in terms of a set of line sections, transmission line sections, which then is called transmission line equivalent of the device. Equivalent circuits are quite common, frequently encountered in the study of engineering. Usually, they serve two purposes. One is they help us in understanding the physics or nature the device easily without much difficulty. Another use of equivalent circuits is in the analysis. Usually we undertake the analysis to estimate the response of the circuit or system. As already mentioned, H plane T's are junctions. Junctions are meant for dividing a wave or combining two or more waves into one. Here, the functioning of H plane T as a divider is illustrated through four block diagrams A, B, C, and D. In A, a matched source is connected to side arm port. Let us suppose the amplitude of the wave that is injected into the side arm is A. Then this wave enters into the junction region. It gets divided into two parts whose amplitudes are A by root 2, A by root 2. So division is into two equal parts. One part appears at port 2, another part at port 1. If the terminations at port 1 and 2 are matched, then these two waves enter into the loads without any reflection. This is the case when source is connected to the side arm port. When source is connected to one of the collinear arm ports, then how division takes place? It is illustrated here in B. Source is connected to port 1. Let us suppose the amplitude of the wave that entered into the arm, which is carrying port 1. Amplitude is A. This wave travels, enters to the junction region, not in total. A part of it gets reflected back towards the source. Only remaining part enters into the junction region. This remaining part then gets divided into two. One traveling towards port 3, another traveling towards port 2. 
analysis tells us that the wave that is traveling towards the source its amplitude is a by 2 wave that is traveling towards port 2 is also a by 2 whereas the wave that is traveling towards port 3 its amplitude is a by root 2 notice in this case the source output is not getting divided between the loads a part of it is getting reflected back towards the source usually it is an unwanted aspect hence when h plane t is used to divide a wave the setup that is illustrated that is shown in a is used that is source is connected to port 3 in c and d wave division is illustrated in terms of its power in c source is connected to side arm port let us say output of the source is p this power totally goes into the junction region there it get split into two parts equal parts one part moving towards port 1 another part moving towards port 2 so total power here is getting divided into two equal parts in d is shown power division in h plane t when source is connected to one of the collinear arm ports port 1 output of the source into side arm 1 is p let us say it is p this power enters into the junction region not totally a part of it gets reflected back towards the source that power is p by 4 only the remaining enters into the junction region there it gets split into two parts one part traveling towards the load connected at port 3 another part traveling towards another load connected at port 2 power flowing towards port 2 is p by 4 power flowing towards port 3 is p by 2 some more points illustrating explaining describing the performance of h plane t as divider if the amplitude of the input wave at port 3 is a then amplitudes of the waves at port 1 and 2 are same and equal to a by root 2 the waves at the output ports are in phase when its collinear arm lengths are same or differ by an integral number of wavelengths usually collinear arm lengths are same so outputs are in phase general situation they are out of phase if the collinear arm lengths differ by odd number of half wave lengths naturally if the amplitude of the input wave at one of the side arm ports let us say port 1 is a then the amplitudes of the waves scattered by the junction into port 1 and 2 are same and equal to a by 2 at port 3 the wave amplitude is a by root 2 now power division in in, in h plane t is described in words when the power incident at port 3 is p then the powers that appear at ports 1 and 2 is p by 2 each for this reason the device is being called 3 db splitter in db of is 3 if the power incident at one of the side arm ports let us say port 1 is p then the power scattered by the junction into ports 1 and 2 is p by 4 each and at port 3 it is p by 2 junctions can also act as combiners as combiners they add two or more waves or power streams into one h plane t as combiner is illustrated in this slide two diagrams are here a and b in a two matched sources they are connected to the collinear arm ports of the t let us say they are giving out waves whose amplitudes are same and equal to a then these two waves enter into junction region and scatter three waves one wave towards port 1 one wave towards port 2 one wave towards port 3 waves towards 
part 1 and 2 they are equal in amplitude which is a by root 2 whereas the wave towards port 3 it uh, exhibits an amplitude equal to a the functioning of h plane t as combiner is illustrated in b in terms of powers matched source connected at port 1 matched source connected at uh, port 2 they give out powers equal powers equal to p they enter into the junction region there this total power gets scattered into three parts one part towards port 1 another part towards port 2 these two parts are equal equal to p by 2 another part towards <coughs> port 3 equal to p now functioning of h plane t as combiner in words when equal strength a input signals are given at both the collinear ports then the output signal appears at the sidearm port whose wave amplitude is a and power is equal to one of the powers of the input sources provided the collinear arm lengths are same and sources are in phase the power out of third port is zero and no power flow exists in any part of the device when two equal strength but out of phase sources are connected to collinear arm ports and collinear arm lengths are same this is similar to two equal but out of phase sources connected in parallel driving a transmission line one source nullifies the other leaving no driving force at all across the line h plant is defined publications in industry as well as in scientific research they are mainly used as tuners tuners are circuits which are used to change the frequency they are also used as power dividers and adders about these two aspects we have discussed at length just now they are also used in duplexer assemblies these duplexer assemblies they are used in radar systems duplexers makes us to use help us to use a single antenna for both transmission as well as reception usually two separate antennas are required one for transmission another for reception in a communication system when one antenna is sufficient when one antenna acts as transmitting as well as receiving antenna then the cost of the system comes down as single antenna is less costly when compared to two antennas these are some of the things which i have to share with you for right now to recap h plane t's are introduced their structural features their electrical properties symbols equivalent circuits their action as dividers combiners their applications all these aspects are touched upon even we have gone slightly deeper to have a reasonably higher level of understanding in the functioning the working of h plane is hope you have a wonderful and beautiful a successful and fruitful and enriching and memorable learning experience see you soon bye bye